My students and I and my teachers, we, we share the same vision. We believe that education is power. And if education is power, all power has to be used towards service. People who come into my school understand that it's not only an, a laboratory for academia, so to speak. It is, it is a space where we will be having connections with children, uh, where children from the community will be coming in, where we'll be dealing with the underprivileged, where we'll be having international programs, where we'll be touching the lives of so many people and so many aspects of, of growth and development. A lot of my children are very keen on making films because they feel that when they make films, they make videos, they connect with, uh, through the use of audiovisual aids, they go out more, they see the real world more. And they've always told me that when they do these kind of projects, they grow. We are awareing the people about what is global warming, what is it causing, what are the effects, what do we have to do. And like carbon footprints is a measure to uh, is a way to measure uh, global warming. So by telling the people and you know make telling them small issues like you know you can switch off the fan, you can switch off the electricity, that really helps. What about the video? Why is that a good idea to use video to teach? Basically, them? it's everything is theoretical. You just keep doing in the books that global warming is this and this is the ways to combat it, solutions. But we don't do anything practically. So this is a step. This is a measure by us that we're making this video so that let people know that yeah we're doing something actually. Okay students, the class is dismissed. Sahil, you still there? Sir, what are carbon footprints? A carbon footprint is a measure of the impact human activities have on the environment in terms of the amount of greenhouse gases produced measured in units of carbon dioxide. As you can see here, methane and carbon dioxide are some of the greenhouse gases and the emission of greenhouse gases lead to global warming and this is measured by carbon footprints. What are emissions? Emissions are gases and particles released into the air as byproducts of a natural or man-made process. One of these processes is the burning of fuels. Worldwide emission levels have increased over the past 200 years. Can you give me some reasons why? Industrial activity. Sir, what do you think about transportation? Yes, industrial activity and transportation are the main causes of this significant rise. One of these processes is the burning of fuels to create electricity and other forms of energy. The emissions from burning fossil fuels contribute significantly to global warming and poor air quality. A small set of emissions are responsible for the majority of human impacts on climate change and health. These gases and particulates come from a variety of sources and can be categorized as the greenhouse gas emissions and air quality emissions. We have already learned what is a carbon footprint. Today we are going to calculate the carbon footprint in our immediate surroundings. What are our immediate surroundings? This classroom, right? The carbon calculation or carbon calculator is divided into four sections that is electricity, heating, transportation and emission reductions. They are appliances like fans and tube lights. And the children like you and me, we emit carbon dioxide. So how does this escape from the room? It escapes from windows, doors and ventilators. Now we are going to measure the dimensions of this room that are length, breadth and height. And we are going to measure the dimensions of the windows, doors and ventilators. Then we will subtract these calculations from the dimensions of the room. Save money and help the climate. If you are in the market for a new appliance, look for the Energy Star label. These products consume 20 to 40% less energy as compared to the standard.
standard products. There are over 35 product categories that bear the energy star, including ceiling fans and appliances. Recycle. It really makes a difference. Make the extra effort to rinse out the spaghetti cans, soup jars and the plastic and soda bottles. Remember, composting food waste for the garden helps returning valuable nutrients to the soil. Remember, the more you recycle, the less waste goes to the landfill. Let us together reduce carbon footprints and the carbon emissions. And if not, this is what we have in store for us. This is where we have started. And this is where we end. realistic is the science and the argument that they put forward. Initially when they were uh, thinking of a movie they got excited and I thought that they are getting deviated from the topic okay so there was the issue of mine I wanted them to come back to the science I wanted to know that what is the consumption of electricity they are going to have in their houses in their community in their school they should react on that they should look around to see that what is the carbon emission they are having due to their transport vehicles. But instead of that, they were happy to take a camera in their hand and just move around and just looking at the emission of the gas or the movement of the uh, bus. So it was a little bit difficult for me, but at least when I convinced them that this is the one, this is the message we have to give to the community, to the students, and if this is your future, if you don't work right now, Earth is going to sink. Nidhi, you worked together, didn't you? Yes. What kind of role did you play in it? Uh, she actually did the experiment with the children and find out that how the carbon rays or the carbon uh, emission is there. And uh, then we worked on the movie with the kids. And I was basically working with the children on making that movie with the help of different softwares. And we worked on that movie of Carbon Footprints where we got to know that which place and where in our school we have the maximum carbon emissions. And were there any surprises for you? Yeah, there were really. The first surprise was my computer lab only when I saw the result and I saw the graph is going like this for the computer lab. I generally thought it would be in bio lab or in chemistry lab, something like that. But it was a real shock for me when I saw the you know the results and the children showed me ma'am this is the graph that you can see the uh, graph going like it was the highest in my lab. Has anything changed in the school since this project was undertaken? At many levels, uh, changes happened in our school. And, and I think uh, even the fact that it, it permeated down to my management. Because I remember that uh, when the children came up to me and, and they all rushed to me and they said, you know, the worst place that uh, has these uh, carbon emissions is your computer room, ma'am. Yeah. And I said, don't tell me. I thought, it was the, uh, I thought it was the chemistry lab. They said, never, it's the computer, computer room. room. I asked the teachers, I asked the children, and we did a, com a kind of a comparative study and analysis. And then we made that out and I put it in front of my managing board during my management board meeting. And I said, look, this is what it is. If we call ourselves a progressive school, if we call ourselves a, a school that believes in doing pioneering things, then let's now relook at our, our computer labs and see how can I prevent this? How can I make it a more environment friendly lab? I think the first step should be that we start implementing this thing in our school so that we can set an example that, like, we are switching off the fans, we're making sure everything is going accordingly. We're not letting people burn the leaves that causes pollution. We're not letting that happen in our school. That is why we want you to help us make this kind of become a revolution and let other schools also follow. Because schools also, like our computer lab got all renovated. So it is a measure from our side how we are doing it and how we could set an example for others to do the same. By making this movie and showing it at various occasions like symposiums which our school holds, 
or showing it to the uh, foreign exchange guests, we are able to spread this message throughout and sort of started as a movement to actually reduce carbon dioxide emissions. On this journey, they've demonstrated a huge amount of faith in what they're saying. Yeah, of course, not only faith, what I can say that the kind of a confidence they have gained, it has helped in learning and teaching process also. Okay, it was not only one side teaching, that is teacher to students, it was you know, both ways. And not only both ways, the elder ones really went uh, to the junior sections and they taught uh, what carbon footprint is, what their role, role should be in the reduction of carbon emission. And elder ones are the ones who really understood the importance of working in a group. And not only in the group, that the extensive study they have to do when they want to uh, pass certain amount of message to the community. And what kind of a responsibility comes on them. They really have learned a lot about that. The concepts of community and within that leadership are obviously important. What ways are you developing that in this school? I can say that the coming in of the school clusters that have been created, I think that itself has been a huge partnership in, in getting involved with the community because of our large numbers in, in, in India, our schools have a huge amount of children. And so if I at Springdale's has a community of 10,000, then the other six schools in my clusters would be having the similar kind of communities. And I think the fact that when we go back to our cluster schools interaction at Leicester, and they then touch their community, so they get our ideas, so it becomes a kind of a global community. Arisha, so great, great film. Thanks. Really liked it. Particularly like the beginning with the, the little animated footprints. So. Thanks. How did you go about doing that? We took a wide snapshot of the board, and the next thing I had to do was get the footprint right. That's great. I had my uh, friend Sahil drawing the footprint, and then we just took a snapshot of it. And then what did you do? Well, uh, then we just imported the snapshots into Flash, and uh, bingo, then using motion tweening and uh, making a mirror image of the original footprint. We get two footprints and that's it. And we get this. It's great that you can do that. And I think that what some filmmakers will find though is that that might be too complicated for them. And there are other ways to achieve it. They can just record a couple of footprints that they've drawn on the board, rub them out, repeat that a couple of times and then in their edit they can just mix between them and that has the same kind of look. Saves you the headache. Which is great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Do you really believe it makes a difference just with a couple of people switching off lights or fans or planting a tree? If you look at this, if I sort of switch the, my uh, lights at my home, it won't make a matter. But if the uh, I guess the one billion population of India does it, it makes a lot of difference.